What if I told you Mel Lewis was my favorite math metal drummer? Just stick Mel in periphery and watch the double kick fireworks. Ridiculous, right? Mel's a jazz great. He helped shape a style of big band drumming that endures to this day. But he's not a math metal drummer. Pretty uncontroversial. Next question. Is Vinnie Paul of Pantera a jazz drummer? Why do we suddenly feel more afraid to draw a line? In this lesson, I'll argue that distinctions do matter. And I'll make a case for why I think jazz is a genre that's been ghettoized in a way that other genres like math metal maybe haven't. But first, here's what started me down this road. A couple of days ago, I posted a question on my Facebook feed. One I thought was pretty innocuous. Just when I thought the topic was dead, I checked back a couple of days later and... CONTROVERSY! I won't post what people wrote because I don't want to put anybody on blast. But let's just say there was a lot of pushback against the idea that there's a spectrum of legitimacy in jazz drumming. So today, why I think that spectrum does exist and why it's important. First though, channel theme. This is Quincy Davis. I've used him as an example before because he spent years studying the tradition and playing all sorts of jazz gigs. And he's got one of the best YouTube channels when it comes to legit jazz drumming. Here's Steve Lyman, also super legit. At least if we agree legit is a thing. He's also spent years studying the great jazz drummers. And here's a guy who hasn't played that much jazz playing a jazz beat. And there are people out there saying we shouldn't make a distinction. Later on, more on what I see as the actual differences. But first, two reasons I think those differences matter. First, the dues paying argument. Pretend you were a black belt in martial arts. And here we go. A real martial art that involves sparring and live combat. or a Division I wrestler, or an MMA fighter with real professional fights. To get to that level, you've endured hard training for at least a decade. You've had your ass kicked. You've been so nervous you wanted to puke before competition. You've lost matches in front of friends and family. You've definitely been injured, more than once, probably more than five times. And you've endured pain, maybe surgery, and the slow, painful process of coming back. Then you overhear some coworkers talking about how they could beat Max Holloway in a street fight. If you can imagine what that would feel like, you're empathetic to my first argument about why distinctions matter. Let's call it the dues paying argument. Whiplash was hopelessly unrealistic about a lot of things, but the one thing it got right was that jazz crucible. Usually in real life though, it's not one guy, let alone a teacher, who actively makes your life miserable. It's more like a thousand dirty looks and sighs from bass players. When you don't know a tune, when you don't know the right style and musicians aren't comfortable with you, when you play too loud, when you rush or drag, then there are the intrinsic punishments. The nights you surprised yourself with how bad you could sound. And even if all the other musicians were polite but just never called you again, you knew. Just like bombing at comedy, that you were the lowest form of life on earth. A new jazz drummer probably has a decade of this to look forward to. In music school, at sessions at places like Smalls or Cleopatra's Needle, and on gigs. And every jazz drummer who, if we were making the distinction, is legit, has been through that. Bill Stewart, Ari, Hutch, Blade, Other Name, Colin, Mark Ferber, Jameson Ross. Oh, quick aside, have I been through that? Definitely. I'll make a video at some point about some of my best vibe stories. Which is not to claim that I'm any good as a result of it. And also not to claim that I had it super hard in relation to some other people. We're talking first world hard.
So that's the dues paying argument. If we were suddenly to say the phrase jazz drummer encompassed anybody who wanted it, it would cease to mean that somebody had had that 10,000 hours in the ring or working his or her way up from doing dishes to a line chef. That's the dues paying argument. Next, the Thai food argument. Brooklyn, where I live, has this issue. It's really hard to find good Thai food. There's a spot called Ugly Baby on Smith Street. Pak Pak used to be on Columbia Street before they relocated out of town. And there's Bauberg and Greenpoint, which is halfway decent. Most of what passes for Thai food in Brooklyn, however, is American Thai. Here's what that has to do with jazz drumming. Every Thai restaurant in Brooklyn has learned they can make money by calling their food authentic Thai. And by doing that, they've basically changed the meaning of the word authentic. To illustrate what I mean, as a diner looking for a place to eat, the phrase authentic Thai no longer tells you anything useful about the experience you're gonna have. It's language garbage. You might as well replace it with gibberish. What if the phrase jazz drummer became exactly like the phrase authentic Thai? If I've got a friend visiting from out of town and she wants to see authentic jazz drumming, I know I should probably recommend Smalls or the Jazz Gallery or on some nights the 55 bar, though some of what happens at the 55 can be more like fusion, or if she's got some money to spend, the Vanguard or the Jazz Standard, or if they're in Brooklyn, someplace like Barbez in Park Slope. If I'm recommending live jazz to a friend from out of town, they're going to see a group of people who have been through that crucible and sound the better for it. I'm not saying all dues paying is the same either. A friend rightly pointed out that he'd hardly played at Smalls, but he'd been writing and rehearsing original music and playing gigs for the better part of 15 years. Same thing. I'm also not making any distinction between traditional or avant-garde. There are heavy players who paid tons of dues doing more experimental jazz at spots like the I-Beam and plenty playing jazz that sounds more like it was recorded in the 1950s. I'm not one of those guys who's gonna say, if it doesn't have a swing eighth and the hats on two and four, it ain't jazz. With all those caveats aside, just like Thai food, you may not be able to articulate why one restaurant feels real and authentic, and another with the standard American Thai menu of oversweetened green curry and oversweetened pad Thai doesn't. But you know there's a difference. And when language ceases to tell us anything useful about that difference, it ceases to be useful. When jazz ceases to describe people who have paid dues and sound like they have, we may as well not even use the word anymore. That's the Thai food argument. So let's say you accept my argument that there's a such thing as authentic jazz drumming. How do you tell the difference? I hate to be blunt, but it's kind of a know it when you see it thing. But if I had to generalize, I would say all these guys sound like they've spent 10,000 hours in a meat grinder. Like here's Jochen Rukert, one of my favorite jazz drummers. And here's the not exactly a jazz drummer guy again. If you think I'm saying only Jochen's style is jazz, check this out. It's Taishan Sori playing a completely different style, but I'd say it's still jazz. And here's that non-jazz guy again. Kendrick Scott. Tommy Crane. Dan Weiss. Nasheet. Lots of different styles, but all, in my opinion, jazz. But let's go back to my metal example from the top of the lesson. Would we force metal fans to define exactly what metal drumming is? Well, usually it's got double kick drums, but not always. For everything they could think of that defines a metal drummer, long hair, satanic cymbals, gated drum mics, we could find an exception that's still metal. But they'd know right away if a jazz drummer who'd never played metal tried to play it. And they'd call him on it. So guys, whether you agree or disagree with my thesis in this video, hopefully it's at least inspired you to think a little bit. And if you have a constructive comment about this whole debate, I encourage you to leave it down below. 
If you're new to the channel, I'm Nate. This is the 8020 Drummer. And every week I come on YouTube and weigh in about something. If you want to get notified every time I post a video, you know the drill. Hit that subscribe button below and the bell to the right of it. Thanks again for watching. See you again real soon.